Hey folks, I'm Rob Franick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Prince Review. Today I'm joining you to discuss some very recent news in college admission. Two more schools have hopped off the test optional, test blind uh, bandwagon and onto the test required one. Uh, that's right, Harvard College and the California Institute of Technology, that's of course Caltech, will once again require applicants to submit SAT or ACT scores for admission for their fall 2025 entering freshman class. That means the next application cycle. Now, Harvard and Caltech will join <clears throat> Dartmouth and Brown and Yale and the University of Texas, all of which have reinstated their testing requirement all in the last year. Uh, and let's just say this out loud. Um, we need to remind ourselves that these schools went test optional during the COVID pandemic, providing flexibility for students when it was a deep, deep struggle to actually sit for an SAT or ACT. So in fact, Caltech has not been test optional, it has been test blind, which means it wasn't even reviewing standardized test scores, even if a student should have submitted them. But now, like their peers, Harvard and Caltech are requiring test scores of all applicants. Uh, and much like the other schools that have already reinstated their requirement of the SAT or ACT, Harvard uh, has been citing research showing that test scores provide value in the admission process. So much so that the admission website at Harvard states the following statement. I just wrote this down so you could, so you could I read it directly to you. Uh, admission team from Harvard says the following. SAT and ACT tests are better predictors of Harvard grades than high school grades. I mean, that is some punchy brevity, some cold, hard Ivy League clarity coming from the Harvard team uh, about how valuable the SAT and ACT are. And let's also understand that the Caltech decision stems from advice that they received from their advisory committee, which is made up of Caltech faculty. So friends, whether you agree with these decisions or not, we really have but one choice moving forward here, and that is to understand how these decisions will inform your admission strategy moving forward. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in these videos and the videos to follow. And just a side point, uh, we thought this was particularly interesting at the Princeton Review regarding Harvard's decision, is that Harvard College announced just last year that it would remain test optional uh, through the admission cycle for the full year 2026. That means that Harvard uh, already relayed to prospective applicants, not just for the next year, but for the two following years, that those students would be reviewed through a test optional lens, a test optional process. Obviously that offer is no longer stands, it's off the table. But I'm just gonna say this out loud. Reneging on previous admission directives and then in, you know, instituting new ones can be super confusing to students who have long known that they were going to apply to Harvard. And the truth is that if you're applying to Harvard or Caltech or any number of the most competitive schools in the land, you need to ensure that your test score is competitive. And at Harvard specifically, that means very competitive. And I'm just gonna cite the facts. Harvard's admission team admitted, and I wrote this down uh, just for their freshman class this, this year, 1,937 students out of an applicant pool of 54,008 students in their full applicant pool. And while we don't yet have the median test scores for those for that full student group, we do know that last year's incoming class to Harvard had a median SAT score of 1540 and a median ACT score of 35. So getting into Harvard is tough, and that is certainly not changing. That all said, uh, there is one odd aspect uh, to both the announcements from Harvard and from Caltech, and that is about the timing. So both announcements were made on April 11th which was eight days before the registration deadline for the May 4th SAT date. Now, uh, this is also about a month uh, before the registration deadlines for the June 1st SAT and the June 8th ACT. So students need now to turn around and immediately register, and then of course prepare for those tests if they now need a test score before applying to any of the schools on their list this fall. However, we also know that most students who are applying to selective colleges already had intention of taking the SAT or ACT, so more than half of the student applicants who applied to Harvard already submitted an SAT and ACT score. And Caltech revealed that 95% of its incoming students took a standardized test SAT or ACT. And they ended up at a school that wouldn't even consider their SAT and ACT scores because they're test blind. We've also been told 
and I'm sure you have heard this as well from many, many students and parents, that everybody thinks that they still need to take the SAT or ACT. Um, on the Princeton Review survey, and I've mentioned this in past videos, the survey is called College Hopes and Worries. It's a survey of college-bound students and their parents. 92% of the respondents said that they were planning to take the SAT, the ACT, or both. So friends, suffice it to say that the SAT and ACT are still deeply important in the college admission process as more and more schools will likely follow the lead of Harvard and Caltech and the small group of other most competitive schools in the land. That all said, if the SAT and ACT are making you nervous about this process of admission, then put that thought out of your mind. That is why we are here at the Prince Review to ensure that you will crush the SAT, the ACT, or both of those tests, no matter your time constraints. And just a point on the time constraints. Our SAT and ACT Essentials course can be completed in under three weeks. Our ACT 31 plus and SAT 1400 plus honors courses can be finished in just under a month's time. Links to those courses and all of the information that we've cited about Harvard and Caltech are all in the info card below. Um, friends, if you have any questions for me, do not hesitate for a second. Send them my way in the comments. I do my level best to answer them all, all right away. Um, and if you haven't already done so, please, please do subscribe to the Prince Reviews YouTube channel for the latest information on college admission and testing and financial aid and everything in between. Rob Frannick, Editor-in-Chief here at the Prince Review, signing off for today. Be well.